Yes. <coughs> so welcome back to the session on understanding this existence and nature. So after having the having understood the existence, we can now look at the role of human being in this ever expressive existence. So coexistence is there and it is expressing itself in the form of four orders of nature and whatever has to happen in the first three order has already taken place. What has to happen in the human order is in the process and we have to complete that process. Right? So that is the role of human being. So whatever has to happen in the process of expression of coexistence has to be completed by the human being. And if you look at what human being has to do is broadly speaking it is this. The important conclusion that we have been able to draw through our investigation till now, one is human being is coexistence of self and body. Self is central to human existence, body is used as an instrument. Need of the self is continuous happiness which is fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling and right thought in the self. Existence is coexistence which is in the form of unit submerged in space. Coexistence is ever present, ever effective, ever expressive. All that we see in nature as four orders is expression of this coexistence. Existence can be understood by awakening to the activities of self, both lower and higher put together. This all we have been able to explore into one by one. On the basis of these conclusions, now we can define the role of human being in this existence. And this is what we intend to do in this session. So if you look at the role of human being in this existence, with our conclusion, we can see that role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence. So very simple. Okay. The role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence. If you look at this, fulfillment of this role leads to continuous happiness in the self, which is the basic human desire. <coughs> so in simple terms, it is this. The existence is in the form of coexistence. It is expressing itself right, in the form of these three orders and finally the human order. And what human being has to do is to complete this process of expression of the coexistence by way of understanding the coexistence and living in coexistence. That is it. Very simple, isn't it? Eh? Yes. <clears throat> so, we will look into this in further detail. To make it more expressive, we can say coexistence, harmony and relationship in place of coexistence. So, if you want to be very precise, it is coexistence. If you want to detail out little bit, this coexistence is expressing itself in the form of harmony and relationship. So, instead of saying just coexistence, we can say coexistence, harmony and relationship. Okay. Can you increase the sound little? The role of human being will be to understand 
the coexistence harmony and relationship and to live in coexistence harmony and relationship right that's it <coughs> If you look at this to understand the coexistence, it has two part. One point one is to understand the coexistence, that is the knowledge, and one point two is to ensure the feeling, thought of coexistence, that is clarity of how to live in coexistence, that is resolution. So to understand the coexistence. has two part number 1 understanding it at the level of knowledge at the level of b1 right and then number 2 at the level of feeling and thought so understanding the coexistence and ensuring the feeling and thought of coexistence and every time you can add this you know in place of coexistence you can say coexistence harmony and relationship but we are keeping it brief so this is part 1 of human conduct or role of human being part 2 is to live in kya ho gaya part 2 is to live in coexistence and when you look at this living in coexistence it has two part to lo- to live in coexistence with human beings from family to world family leading to undivided society and to live in coexistence with entire nature from family order to world family order ultimately leading to universal human order <coughs> so what has to happen at the level of self is this understanding of coexistence feeling and thought of coexistence what has to be expressed outside in relationship with other one is to live in coexistence with human beings and to live in coexistence with entire nature this living in coexistence with human being will lead to the human society the undivided society from family to world family and living in coexistence with the entire nature from family order to world family order will ultimately lead to universal human order this is the role of human being in this coexistence or in this coexistence harmony and relationship so this we have been talking about all through but we have just you know we are now recalling all that so this is the role of human being knowledge which means basically understanding of coexistence resolution which means understanding the right feeling and right thought or feeling and thought of coexistence so this is understanding of coexistence this is feeling and thought of coexistence this is living in coexistence with human being living in coexistence with the entire nature so this is two parts ensuring knowledge and resolution in the self ensuring undivided society and universal human order by working through body in mutual relationship is that clear what else you need to do this much is fine or anything else to be done mm, sir so what is the difference between family and family order yeah when you are saying family the major focus is on relationship with other human being when you are saying family order 
it has to do with the relationship with human being as well as you know the rest of nature so the whole nature is involved in this process so like <coughs> we are running this class you know conducting this class one part is my behavior with you you know in transacting this knowledge right the other part is that making so all this arrangement isn't it so when one is focusing on the relationship with human being that is the family you know when one is focusing on relationship with human being as well as the entire nature then it is family order that is the difference and i have to take care of both this transaction between me and you is possible because so much of other you know arrangement has been ensured so any process of education and sanskar for that exam for for that matter will involve the behavior and it will also involve the the whole order you know the arrangement that has to be done to make that transaction possible isn't it in hindi it is said vyavastha tamil must have an equivalent word for vyavastha providing a family order and the order means what you must be mean by it here order means there is a system system there is a system right of dealing with or relating to human being as well as the whole nature that is the meaning of order order is not passing orders right the meaning of it is system so you have to take care of the relationship with human being and you have to take care your of your relationship with the entire nature when you are focusing on the relationship with human being the major issue is the feeling that we should understand right the major issue in relationship with human being is the feeling you know in relationship do you get this point whereas when it comes to system i have to take care of the feeling as well as all this you know structure that i have to ensure isn't it so all the arrangements of the room and the chairs and the gadda and this takia and you know the bpts and uh, air condition eh? air condition and then uh, this overhead projector and all those things right and every day the room has to be open and closed finally at 5:30 or there after all these things now this is not exactly the transaction right it is facilitating the transaction but without that the transaction is not possible so it means system you know <coughs> so all these four are necessary the knowledge the understanding then the regulation the right feeling and right thought path then behavior with human being and finally interaction with the entire nature the system that ensures no harmony with the entire nature role of human being in this existence so the role of human being in this existence is to understand the coexistence and to live in coexistence to make it more expressive we can say that say coexistence harmony and relationship in place of coexistence 
So it would mean to understand the coexistence, harmony and relationship and to live in coexistence, harmony and relationship. Right? That is our role. To understand the coexistence, harmony and relationship and to live in coexistence, harmony and relationship. Now we can recall that this is what we have been working on in exercise 1. Can you recall this? In exercise 1, what essentially we are trying to do through 7 steps is that we are trying to understand that existence is in the form of coexistence, harmony and relationship. We are trying to see that what is naturally acceptable to us as human being is to be with the feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship. That is what is naturally acceptable. Therefore, I am trying to be aware of my imagination every moment, right? my feeling every moment and every moment I am evaluating whether this feeling I have at this moment is in line with coexistence, harmony and relationship or otherwise. I am also trying to verify that if I have the feeling in line with this, it leads to harmony and happiness. Even for a moment, if I have a feeling which is contrary to this, it leads to disharmony and unhappiness. And if I do this aware, you know, evaluation with awareness, then I will be able to make sure that the feeling which are in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence will continue. The feeling which are not in line with this, right, they will start dying out or they will disappear because they are not leading to my harmony and happiness. So this is what exactly we are trying to do in exercise 1. Making sure that I understand this coexistence, harmony and relationship. I see that this coexistence, harmony and relationship, this feeling is what is naturally acceptable to me. And this is what leads to harmony and happiness. Therefore, by being aware every moment, I can keep observing my feeling and keep evaluating my feeling. Right? And ultimately make sure that every moment I have the feeling which is in line with this. Right? Harmony, relationship and coexistence. And therefore, I am in a state of harmony and happiness with these feelings. Is that clear? Now you can relate it to exercise 1. Anybody who cannot relate this? Sir, yeah. two specific terms have been used in the last slide. Mm. One is world family order. The other is universal family order. Human order, sorry. So, sir, uh, is there any essential uh, difference in between the two? Effectively, there is no difference between the two. But only thing is that when you are saying world family order, you are in the process of ensuring, you know, living in order at the level of world family. Hmm. This is what ultimately will result into. See, the oh. outcome finally, whatever is the outcome, that we are saying this is the ultimate outcome and that we are calling as name universal human order. Because this order is going to be universal in nature. Not that I will have one kind of order, you will have another kind of order. Ultimately, when we try to realize the human order at the world level, it will turn out to be something which is universal in nature, which is also human, right? Today, you know, if you look at the organizations like United mm. Nations, right? Are they human or not human? 
Thank you, sir. Are they taking care of the well-being of all? Or <laughs> they are exploiting some nation in favor of other nations? Right? So, it is not human. It is not even universal. Because those who are controlling it, they think it is a very good organization. Those who are controlled by this organization, they think it is a bad organization. Isn't it? Yeah. So we keep talking about world order, but that world, world order will be human or inhuman, that is not very clear. Whether it will be universal or it will belong to a particular you know, sect of people. But what is being proposed here, that is if I am ensuring harmony, no? living in harmony with the entire nature. This will result into an order which is going to be accepted by all of us. It is going to be universal. It is going to be human. Isn't it? Similarly, when you think in terms of living in relationship with other human beings, from family to world family, this will be a divided society or undivided society? Undivided society. It will be a human society or inhuman society? Human society, right? So it is called undivided society or undivided human society. In fact, most of the organization that you see at the national, international level, you find that some nations are controlling it and using it to their ends, right? Rather than working for the well-being of all. Yes, we talked about. In step 6a, we are verifying that it is the feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship that is natural for us and that leads to a state of happiness. In step 6b, we are trying to understand coexistence, harmony and relationship. That is the major part of UHV 3 content, right? Is related to this. In step 7, we are ensuring that the feeling and thought that we have at this moment is in line with coexistence, harmony and relationship and not otherwise. <coughs> this leads to a state of happiness in me at this moment. If I can ensure this every moment, then I can ensure a state of happiness every moment, a state of continuous happiness. So what we are trying through exercise 1 and 2 is essentially identifying the role of human being in this existence and fulfilling it by way of ensuring understanding, feeling and thought of coexistence, harmony and relationship every moment. So this is what we are trying to do through exercise 1 and 2. Okay. <coughs> so if you look at ESV 3 content, the core is that number one, we are trying to understand the human being, we are trying to understand the existence in which this human being is embedded. Then we are trying to understand the role of human being in this existence, right? That is one part that we are doing. The second part is that through exercise 1 and 2, we are trying to look into our own self, okay? And verify and then make sure that we have the right understanding or understanding of this relationship, harmony and coexistence. And we have that feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence every moment. And thereby with that feeling, we are in a state of harmony and happiness within in continuity. So one part is to understand, the other part is to ensure that we are in that state of being. Can you see this whole thing you know, now? Can you see all that interconnection what, of what we have done in last five, six days?
So understanding human being, understanding the existence, understanding the role of human being in this existence and then looking into oneself, one's interaction with the world and making sure that it is so. You know. That is, I am able to understand the coexistence, harmony and relationship. I have the feeling of coexistence, harmony and relationship and I am living with this feeling of harmony coexistence, harmony and relationship in my behavior, in my work, in my participation. The second part is done by exercise 1 and 2. The first part of understanding is done through all the content that we have been discussing in the lectures. Human being leads to continuous happiness in the self. This is expressed in the form of bliss, satisfaction, peace and happiness. Right? This is what we have been talking about. right? <coughs> so ultimately, if I understand this coexistence, harmony and relationship, and my feelings, my thoughts are in line with this, then I will have all this bliss, satisfaction, peace, happiness, put together continuity of happiness. And with that continuity of happiness, when I express outside, I will have my behavior with human being leading to mutual happiness. I will work with rest of nature leading to mutual prosperity. And I will participate in the larger order for ensuring the fulfillment of human goal. And if I expand it to the world level, the outcome will be undivided human society and universal human order. Right? So, the whole thing will start with realization of coexistence and complete with realization or authentication of the universal human order. This is the range of human living human conduct, human existence. Yeah. Can you throw some more light upon the states of happiness, peace, satisfaction, bliss? Is it the intermediate state or the state directly connected to say the selection tasting happiness and the other states like peace, satisfaction, bliss, are they the higher states? How do we define that particularly, if there is a definition? Yeah, I'll come back to this. Okay, <clears throat> Let me just finish this part of the uh, lecture. So with this fulfillment of role of human being in the existence, the pro process of unfolding of coexistence is also completed. So interestingly, when you complete your purpose, expression of coexistence, right? <coughs> so the process of ex unfolding of coexistence is completed when I complete my role as a human being, right? <coughs> so this much has already happened. This has to be done by human being. So when I do this, I am completing this process of expression of coexistence in the form of universal human order. <coughs> that is what is expressed here. So this much is, has happened by way of coexistence. I don't have to do anything there. <coughs> Given all this, I have to complete this much. Complete this much. Existence, this universal human order is completed. So ultimately the coexistence has to express itself in terms of this universal human order. And that process will be completed if I as human being complete 
this human conduct on my part. Can we just reduce the sound? Hello? In case of molecular structure, you have mentioned only lump and fluid. Gas also there. For example, water, there are three stages. Solid in zero degree. In 30 degree, maybe liquid. Above 100 degree, there's gaseous phase structure also there. Three phases. Here only you have pointed out lump and fluid. Yeah. <coughs> this lump contains all those collections, you know, whether it is in the form of solid or gas or liquid. But this fluid, we have kept it separately only to indicate that there, is, there are some liquids which are used for nurturing of the cells. So in that sense, we have kept a separate thing, but not used for this liquid. This is fluid means those particular liquids which are combinations which are used for nurturing the cells. In that sense, we have. Okay. Normally, we In, say uh, fluid means uh, gas or liquid. Okay. I mean, what I am saying is lump means collection of these atoms, you know, molecules, whether it is in the gas form or liquid form or uh, gaseous form, you know, solid form. I am putting one separate category because I want it to relate to the nurturing of the cells. So, the, those sort of lump material which are used for nurturing the cells. Like water is one such thing which is used for the nurturing of the body, human body and animal body, right? And the plants. Similarly, there are many types of juices which are useful for your nurturing of the body. This Oxygen. One category. Oxygen. Eh? Oxygen. Okay, you may think. The whole idea is that you have one category which is used for the nurturing of the cells. Yes. So we have seen that role of human being in this existence is to understand the existence, coexistence and to live in coexistence, which essentially means this. Now the question is how do we go about ensuring this role? One of the possible ways is what we have described in through exercise 1, 2, 3. Out of this we already working through exercise 1 and 2 and preparing ground for exercise 3. So sometime we will exercise, start exercise 3 also, but till now we are working on exercise 1 and 2. Yes, yes, yeah, lot of homework is already done. So let us see whether it results into fulfillment of the role of human being, leading to continuous happiness in the self, which is the basic human desire or not. This we have to see, you know, by doing exercise 1, 2. And then after, sometime after, you know, three. <coughs> yeah, so this is about the lecture 20 that we wanted to talk about. Uh, your self-reflection, go through exercise 1, step 6a, exercise 1, step 6b, and exercise 1, step 7. This is your homework. Okay, don't change. I have to just get back to this. Nidhi ji, I have to use this. Huh? Hmm? No, it has been... Uh. See, these five, four states which are mentioned here, bliss, satisfaction, peace, and happiness. Basically, if you want to use a very common expression, it says being in harmony at that level of activity. So if I am in harmony at the level of testing and selecting, that state is called happiness. If I am in harmony at the level of thought, that is peace. If I am in harmony at the level of feeling, that is satisfaction. And if I am 
in harmony at the level of understanding at the level of you know <coughs> determination then i am in a state of bliss so being in harmony at different levels of my activities when you say continuous happiness it means i am in harmony at all levels of my activities so that continuous happiness includes all of them but when we uh, speak regarding happiness there itself we say that it is not excitement but in continuity now when we further discuss about peace satisfaction bliss and super bliss also was written in one of the slides so if uh, we have to give clarity regarding the what is peace satisfaction bliss and super bliss are there higher levels of happiness or as you said harmony in each level of activity See, when there is harmony in your thought that is peace peace does not mean you have no thought but it means there is no contradiction in your thought so peaceful thought you know when there is contradiction in your thought you are restless you know no peace of mind you say so that is the meaning that my thoughts are in harmony there is harmony in my thought in other words there are no contradictions in my thought that is the meaning of peace the meaning of satisfaction is that there is no contradiction or there is harmony at the level of feeling or in other words there are no contradiction at the level of feeling okay what does it mean it means that if i can see my participation my relationship in this existence i can see that the whole existence is by way of relationship and i am also related to every unit in existence by this relationship number 1 so i have the feeling of relationship for everyone number 2 i can also see that this is the very design of the existence right that this relationship can always be fulfilled because there is all provision for the fulfillment of this relationship so when it comes to having this feeling they become definite and their fulfillment also becomes definite <laughs> because i can see that the provision is always there <coughs> so my desire has become definite and its fulfillment is always ensured that leads to the feeling of satisfaction <coughs> when my desires are not definite then there is dissatisfaction and when i have a desire and it cannot be fulfilled then there is dissatisfaction but when i can see that all desires are definite and all of them can be fulfilled right then there is a feeling there is a this satisfaction for example i want to be in relationship with all of you right i want to live with relationship okay and when i look at the whole existence i see that there is all provision for my you know ensuring the fulfillment of being in relationship okay. so i know whenever i have to express myself in relationship with you it is always welcome to begin with there may be some you know kind of preconditionings which are not you know in line with this whole process but if i have the clarity i can start with it and if i behave with you with a feeling of relationship you will always welcome it you may or may not be able to respond but you will always welcome the feeling 
of relationship that I am expressing towards you. So in that sense there is satisfaction. Similarly this happiness is not the happiness you are getting from outside. This happiness is born out of the fact that when I see my relationship with other, right? For example, I have this feeling of relationship with you and I have the feeling of trust, right? Or let's say respect and I want to express that feeling of respect to you, okay? And I am selecting some particular gesture to express my feeling of respect. That very selection with that background of feeling, I can see that this gesture will be accepted by you because that feeling is accepted by you. And if there is some mismatch, I will set it right because it may be possible that I have one form of expression and you are used to some other form of expression. Isn't it? So if that is the case, I will learn, you know, what is the, your form of expression and I can use that. In India, for example, if you want to respect an elder or express your, express, uh, your respect to an elder, you go and touch, your feet, touch the feet of the other, you know, elder. Right? But that is not the same in all over the, you know, world. Okay. The notion of touching feet may not be there at all. Right. When we went to Bhutan, we found that this notion of touching even hand is not there. Okay. So you, you know, welcome like this. Now, you are not touching hand, not giving ashirvad, not touching feet, right? Now, if you look at it from your this thing, it's quite different. But you go there, you express in a manner, the other person expresses in a different manner, and you learn how they are expressing, okay? And you are comfortable with their expression. One, two transactions, and you will learn. Uh, Ganeshji, namaste. Uh, and that super bliss, I will just add that, is when this pure observer is able to see, realize the space, right? And its coexistence in space. So when at the level of pure observer, I am able to see the space and I am able to see my coexistence in space. And I am able to see that all the need of the self, uh, of the pure observer is fulfilled, you know, in coexistence, in space. That is the state of super bliss. <coughs> I have a yes. question. Can it be possible that uh, I am at harmony or happiness, but not in peace? <coughs> You mean I am here in harmony? Yeah, at the level of expectation, I am at harmony, but my thoughts are not in harmony maybe, so I am not at peace or satisfaction. See, ultimately, this complete harmony at all levels of your activities takes place when you have the realization of coexistence and everything else is coming down from there. That is the ultimate state that is desirable and that is possible. If that state is not there and you are traveling from below, if you are going up like this, then yes, it is possible that you have been able to manage this harmony here, but that contradiction is, some contradiction is here or some contradiction is there. When you are moving from you know, bottom to top, 
when you have gone, moved up to the top and you are coming, you have come down from there, then there will be no contradiction. So the whole traveling has to be done from the lowest activity to the highest activity and then from highest activity back to the lowest activity. Then the process is complete, then there is harmony everywhere. When you are going from bottom to the top, even if you manage the harmony at the lower level, it will not necessarily ensure the harmony at the higher level. That you have to slowly work out. Ganeshi, I am having a doubt. Is it so that when we are going up from happiness, peace, satisfaction, the degree or intensity of harmony increases? Yeah, degree in the sense, the higher activities, at the level of higher activities, also you are in harmony. <clears throat> Whether there will be variation that if I am at peace, I will be in more harmony. If I am at satisfaction, I will be I like mean, that. <clears throat> more in what sense? More in the sense that I am in harmony here, I am in harmony here. <coughs> If I still go up, then I am in harmony here, here and here. Isn't it? Ganesh ji, if it is only increasing, only then I will move forward. So there must yeah. be some uh, intensity or degree that is gives me more happiness or more harmony, something like that. <laughs> so that I will be willing to go to the next higher level. Yeah, here means higher activities, mm, at the mm. level of higher activity. See, for example, if there is harmony at the level of feeling, then that will lead to the harmony at the level of thought. That will lead to the harmony at the level of selections. So, more means harmony at higher levels, I mean, more levels of the cell, activity of the self. That is not the matter of intensity at any particular level. At any particular level, either you are in harmony or not in harmony. It was shown as the in-between state also. That is from the selection tasting to, if you go to the thought level, analysis comparison then happiness is there. So now there is a confusion regarding this. Now what you are explaining is very clear, but in the, one of the previous uh, lectures, I think in the module 3 or so, this was given as the, when you shift from the lower activity to the next higher activity, you are in happiness. See, there are different ways of, you know, trying to understand how it works. For example, this feeling of relationship can be ensured when I understand the harmony in nature. Harmony in nature can be ensured when I understand the coexistence. Now, if you relate it this way, then it appears that this relationship ensured with the understanding of harmony. So, this satisfaction is placed here on that, you know, line in between. But if you ask where the satisfaction is taking place, in between or in one of the activity, it is taking place in the activity of, you know, this feeling. So, how you are trying to relate to it, you know, that placement is done. But this seems to be a proper placement in the sense that it tells you in which activity this feeling is going to take place. Sir, so, so, so can, uh, how do you, how can we expand that uh, term uh, harmony in nature? So when I went through your book, it is written um, mutual enrichment in nature. Is it like that? Yeah, when you look at the nature and all these units in nature, they are mutually enriching for each other. 
that you say, you know, they struggle for survival. That is not the way the nature is. The nature is by way of mutual fulfillment. Yeah, mutual enrichment. A small grass and a big tree, they are not killing each other, you know, denying each other. They are enriching each other. But uh, that struggle is written in coexistence. Uh, struggle, uh, it is not way of struggle, is written for coexistence. For harmony in nature, it is written mutual enrichment. Yeah. So, that mutual enrichment is there. That is the meaning of harmony. That we are, you know, uh, what, what word will you use? for harmony. We yeah. are in synergy, you know. Mm. We are related to each other in a mutually fulfilling manner. Right? And each unit is enriching the other unit. So, for example, the physical order is enriching the pranic order. The yes. pranic order is enriching the, you know, animal order. So, if you look at it in the forest, all these three orders are enriching each other without you doing anything. In that sense, we are saying there is harmony in nature. Okay. So, this is about the human being in existence, right? The conduct of human being in the existence. And if the human being is living like this, has this conduct, then it will help to complete the process of expression of coexistence, starting from coexistence to universal human order. That whole process will be completed. Yes. <coughs> we can move to lecture 21 and 22. In human conduct, the all-encompassing resolution and holistic way of living. Lecture 21, we are talking about human conduct, model 1. So, remember these three things we are talking about, the basic human desire, right? That is continuous happiness, continuous happiness fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling and right thought. Then resolution means clarity of all this and we are trying to expand on right understanding. And you remember right understanding, we said three parts. Knowledge of human being, knowledge of existence, knowledge of human conduct. <coughs> Till now we have explored into knowledge of human being and knowledge of existence. With that too we can talk about the knowledge of human conduct, which naturally comes out of this first two. So, in the process of knowing, we have investigated into knowledge of human being, knowledge of existence. On the basis of knowing the above two, now we want to investigate into knowledge of human conduct. We can look at human conduct from two different angles. We will look into two formulations, model 1 and model 2. In model 1, we will look at what we have been seeing as role of human being as shown in the next slide. It must be mentioned that here again we have two possibilities. Conduct when we are moving towards higher activities of the self and conduct when you are moving downward from the activity of the self. This represents the complete human conduct. Here we are starting with second possibility of model 1. At the end of this session we will briefly mention about the first possibility of model 1. We will try to investigate into each step of expression of human conduct starting from activity of realization. So, if you start from that top, you know, that is realization of coexistence, then everything will start falling into place. So, I have the realization of coexistence. In the light of that realization of coexistence, I can understand the harmony in nature. And I can see my relationship with every unit in nature in existence. And when I see my relationship with every unit in existence, that becomes my desire, right? That governs my feeling. 
and that feeling of with feeling of relationship with every unit i can now think how to go about fulfilling that relationship and what to do outside so all my imagination is based on those feelings of relationship with every unit in existence and that with that my imagination is always in line with that coexistence harmony and relationship so these are the descriptions of what will happen in me at these levels of activity when i am coming from top to the bottom okay no no is it okay from realization down to the selection and testing there everything is in order everything is in harmony right you have harmony at all levels of your activity so ultimately this is what is desirable at the level of self and if this is happening at the level of self then this is what will be expressed outside through the body right and if this is what is expressed through the body then this is the ultimate outcome of this so this is the model one of human conduct right this is where we have to reach ultimately this state of my being so you can see all our discussion last six days are centered around this that we want to reach to this state of my being right so we start with contemplation move to understanding to realization then from realization come down to understanding and contemplation and then make sure that all this is in line with that contemplation in line with coexistence harmony and relationship <clears throat> so if this happens then i am all the time in harmony with it in a state of continuous within and i am behaving with other human being resulting into mutual happiness working with rest of nature resulting into mutual prosperity and i am participating in the larger order leading to fulfillment of human goal and then i will work for expanding it right right to the up to the world family order so this is how i have to be as a human being this is how i have to conduct as a human being ganesh ji yeah in this slide uh, we are considering the body on um it's working fine it's hearing to the sense uh, instructions given by the uh, self now if the body has ailments then um um uh, there will be a disharmony in the self so what how, how to deal with that <coughs> see if you are centered here then it is this realization of coexistence which is ensuring the self organization of the self in that case it will not be affected by the body you know of course you will do whatever you have to do to keep the body in good health 
that you will do from your side, from the side of the self. But despite all that, if the body is not in good condition, right, and I can see there is some problem in the body, so I can observe and I try doing whatever can be done to bring this body back to health. But in the meantime, I am not affected by it. In the meantime, I am not affected by it. I will certainly do whatever I am. I will take note of it and I will do whatever has to be done. For example, somebody, let's say, you know, you're, you had a wound in your leg, right? And you see that there is a wound and there, you know, the blood is oozing out of it. Now, what will you do? You will start crying or try to do something to stop that bleeding, isn't it? You will do that, but you will not be affected by it. Yes, will not be affected by it. I want to share my experience over this what you said. But I don't know in which state I was that time. Now it is 2024, 2013, December 24, one day before Christmas. Night uh, time was around 11. Okay, morning I need to come to college. So that day I had full of work, uh, entering marks and other things. Then my mother... Uh, said you go to sleep, I'll take care of the rest and then morning you need to get up. So that time uh, when she was going to the bathroom, I went fast. We used to put hot water actually for uh, if the vessels are full of oil, na, if you pour hot water, cleaning will be fast. Otherwise you need to two, three times re again the clean the vessels again and again. What did I do is, uh, I think my, yeah, 10 years before, Correctly, 11 years now. It's going to be 11th year. I just took the hot water to pour in a bucket. Then we used to have surf in the bucket and then pour it on the vessel and then the cleaning will be fast. I just, I don't know what happened that time. When it boiling 100 degree, I just took the hot water. Suddenly it felt out of my hand. That's all I know. It fell on the gas stove. 100 degree water, uh, this full left side, it fell at 11. I did not shout, I did not scream, I don't know what happened. As you said, what you need to do immediately to stop the bleeding, na? What thought came at that age? Even I was 11 years younger than this age, that time. No maturity, that much maturity and all. I immediately ran to the just bathroom and it was cooling time, na? December. I just pour all the cold water immediately on the face. After seeing my face, my mother screamed and cried like anything. But I, I did not show any reaction. I don't know how much I was stubborn. I don't know what happened. Okay, this pain, spinal cord surgery pain, I shouted to doctor. But that hot water, you know how it will be the feel. I did not feel anything. But my mother is seeing my face and she is crying like anything. 11.30 they took to the hospital. Then it took 10 days for me to peel off. Doctor first said, who gave you the first aid? I said, nobody. I went to the bathroom. I poured uh, cold water on the face. That is the first thing. Otherwise, it would have gone to second degree burn. But I have one second degree burn here over the chest region because the water poured till chest here. This full face, I the side knows everything until the chest it poured. That was a real lifetime serious incident uh, which I saw in my life. Because other pain, surgery and all, okay. Sudden fire accident, when they feel only, you can recognize, no. That I felt. And he said, for you, healing also became very fast. In 10 days, it got healed. Yeah, my dean also went to a stage of crying. I told her, I want to actually show you one spot. Some water fell on its face. Nah, I took 10 days leave. DST Inspire was going on that time. Yeah. Yeah, but what happened, I don't know, sir. Today morning when I was bathing, 
the spiel also came out he said shut your mouth <laughs> i was telling to him jovially what happened to me i don't know i can't even blink my eye yeah cornea everything got infected this was exactly on december 24 2013 <coughs> yeah but i want to know in what state i was that time you are telling the five different stages here no i did not scream i did not shout i did not even cry at all nothing no reaction immediately yeah. went to the bathroom and pour water that's all so from your response what i can say is that you were not affected by this burning of the body right you maintained your harmony within and you did what you thought should be done for the body and that can that is what should be done i am saying that it is not necessary that if some thing happens with the body i must get affected no if i am in a state of harmony within right i will not get affected by something happening in the body in fact i will be responsible towards the body and i will do whatever is needed to be done you know in that particular condition good very nice okay so this is one expression about the human conduct that is how the human conduct would look like can you see this understand this is it desirable is it desirable is it feasible yes so we all have to work for it and we keep saying that ultimately the role of human education is to ensure this for every you know student every child going through the process of education so how many years should it take for the child to get into this have this kind of human conduct desirable that is definite right any one of you think that it is not desirable so it is desirable and we have to work for it and that is the purpose of human education so this is the description of human conduct <coughs> in fact uh, there are other uh, descriptions also of course equivalent description but it can be described in different ways but we'll not go into those uh, other uh alt- alternative expressions let's look at this and settle whether this human this expression of human conduct is desirable not desirable whether this should be the aim of human education or otherwise if this should be the home aim of human education are we able to do this with the education that we are giving we are all giving 20 years of education right are we able to do this for every child going through this 20 years of education yes no no but it is desirable yes so the purpose of uhb is essentially this that we should prepare ourselves to give this kind of education and sanskar to every child right at least let us start preparing ourselves for this purpose right and if we can give it to the students also very good and those three steps we were talking about yesterday right human education that is value education value based education and value based living three steps for ensuring human education value education value based education and value based living that means we will be the living example of this and every child who comes to us 
to get education will be able to get this kind of education which will ensure this conduct for every child this part anyway i'll come back to this again tomorrow so knowledge of human conduct in model 1 we have two possibilities conduct when we are moving towards higher activities of the self this i have already talked about observe your current conduct and investigate whether it is in line with human conduct or not and identify the areas where you your conduct is not completely human detail out what you are thinking to do about it difficult task right difficult homework at present what do you think of the scope of your participation or conduct that is till which level of your living family society country nature or entire existence what is the scope of your participation what do you think ah at the level of individual not even family yes with how many people are you able to see and accept your leader relationship unconditionally and continuously that is you are natural you have natural feelings for them like trust respect in continuity and you are able to respond and not react in all conditions very difficult question number 4 right <laughs> they seem to be very difficult question to begin with yes they are because we are otherwise but ultimately we have to reach there each one of us yes so work on this and let's see if there is any question left we have few minutes left with us we can respond to some of your questions on this i have only one question bhaiya <clears throat> uh, like uh, whatever we are doing in one janma it will be carried out for next janma also what we are studying also that will be taken care for next janma and uh, the like that's in what we are doing that also carried out if i am re- if i am not reaching the maximum point in this janma that w- but i am in the half way that can be carried out for my next janma also in case if there is a birth this janma i am not attaining the super bliss level but for half a came that will be carried out for the next uh, also this effect <coughs> see i mean a simple way to look into this is that if i understand something today tomorrow that understanding will remain or it will be lost be remaining for years also <coughs> so it is as simple as that right okay if i have not understood and assume something under some condition then if that condition changes i may start assuming otherwise so the core thing is whether i have understood it or not understood it right whether it is today and tomorrow or whether in this association of the with the body or the next association with the body right in fact if you really start working on this exercise 1 and 2 you would realize that all the time you are with your own self sometime you are interacting with the body this you should be able to work and see for yourself you are there with yourself every moment all the time whether you are aware or not that is another issue 
but you are with yourself. Sometime, as and when you find necessary, you refer to the body. And how oftenly, if you really look at the uh, this thing, you know, and do the calculation, it will be less than one percent. Right? That means my association with the body is by choice. Even now, when I am continuing with this body, I am not associating with the body every moment. Once in a while, I pay attention to the body, read the sensation of the body. Right? When I am paying attention to the body and reading some sensation from the body, then only I am associated with the body. Otherwise, I am busy in myself only. Right? So, I associate with the body at this moment of time. Then next 10 minutes, I am not associating with the body. Then I again, you know, consider it important and I start interacting with the body, associating with the body. What do you think? What will happen in between? My understanding will remain there or it will disappear? It will remain. Now, taking birth again, what essentially it means? It means self is continuing. It was associating with one body and next time it will associate with some other body. Now, it is the same body or the other body I continue to be. That we have to understand. Uh, our discussion, like earlier and all, I will have a doubt whether I will reach there. So, I will see some people. Well, when we will reach their position, is it possible if you are in that condition, I feel? Like after I came into UHV, first time I saw Sunil Bhaiya, I will think when I will reach or react like Sunil Bhaiya like that. Now I am seeing you, I will think like, is it possible for me to reach your condition in your age at least, if I am reaching your age? But as per our discussion, you said it is desirable just before. I am taking as it is. But it is possible, no, Bhaiya? It, it is desirable and it is possible. Okay. Ultimately, everybody has to reach to this. Okay, okay. No stop in between. Okay, then I will try for yes. the rest. I, I am expecting. We have to try it for ourselves. Yes. And we have to try to make a system of education. Okay where it becomes possible for every child. Okay. Keep that as the target. You know. okay. Keep that as the target. Not only that I will realize it for myself, I will realize it for myself and work for a system of education which makes it possible for every child. That is our target. That is what we are trying to do. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you. Sir. For any individual in this coexistence, uh, it is necessary that uh, understanding is required. But in that process, what is the role of seva and prarthana? The meaning of seva is, you know, Uh, what what will you call it in English? Service. service. <coughs> the meaning of service would essentially be that if I understand these three things, coexistence, harmony and relationship, right? Then what will I do? I will live accordingly. That is service. That is seva. Right? What more can we seva? Eh? Yeah. So if you have not reached to this understanding and you are working for it, then I will ensure that whatever I am doing here is in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence. And I will try to ensure that feeling that I have, the thought that I have, 
ए आर इन लाइन विथ रिलेशनशिप हारमोनी एंड को एग्जिस्टेंस इफ आई डू दैट आई मे नॉट हैव द कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ इट बिकॉज दैट अंडरस्टैंडिंग पार्ट इज नॉट देयर बट इवन फॉर सम मोमेंट आई एम हैविंग दिस आई एम कंफर्टेबल विद इन राइट एंड आई एम मेकिंग अदर्स कंफर्टेबल राइट एंड I am reminding myself that now I am doing this with effort, but ultimately it has to become something natural in me. And in order for it to become natural, I have to develop the understanding of it. You know, understanding of relationship, harmony, and coexistence. So, in fact, if you look at exercise one and two, step one, two, three. we are trying to start from wherever we are and trying to set our feelings and thoughts right right step 6 a and at 6 b now we are trying to understand this relationship harmony and coexistence and if we are able to do that in step 7 b we are then trying to set everything in order on the basis of that understanding so the role of service will be to start with right behavior and right feeling and right thought even if we do not have the understanding of relationship harmony and coexistence okay when we are moving from below to top and then same service would mean that if i have that understanding then the natural outcome of it in terms of right feeling right thought and right behavior seva and prayer ah uh, this prayer is very interesting thing you know the meaning of the prayer is i am trying to recall okay what this existence is what i am and what i have to be right what is this existence this nature right what i am okay and what i have to be in this nature in this existence can you see this three things so it helps you to understand the whole existence understand your position in this existence understand your purpose in this existence right and also understand how this purpose can be fulfilled and then commitment for it of course isn't it what more to be included in prayer so every time you remember this it is a prayer you remember the existence as coexistence nature as harmony right and relationship with everyone okay every time you see that you are already embedded in it right you are already fulfilled by it without you doing anything right you are there by virtue of coexistence by virtue of harmony by virtue of relationship right if you remember this it is a prayer right you have that feeling of gratitude you know it is a prayer then you identify understand yourself you know what you are who you are that is a prayer then you work out what is your role right what is your purpose what you have to do all this is prayer isn't it so every time you recall you have a commitment to work for it isn't it 
So you must pray, not only once in a day time, every moment, you know. So, <laughs> so your seva should go every moment, your prayer should go every moment, right? Eh? Yes, so this exercise one is the prayer, you know. Exercise two, prayer and service. It's about the time is over. I should stop. But nice. Uh, you remember we talked about 3.1, right? Eight of them are remaining and only one day is left, right? 